And get this, can you believe this? Exactly a year ago today, the S&P 500 hit its pre-pandemic peak. And what a year it has been for the benchmark index, up nearly 80% since the March trough and surpassing last year's milestone to set new records. But if you're worried you've missed out on the rally, the chart master, Carter Braxton Worth, has some surprising names that might be ready to play catch up. Carter, what are you looking at? You bet. And this will play right to uh, the conversation you were having about whether it is right to be in beta and cyclical type names, reflation names, or not. Uh, let's look at a table and then four charts. The first table. This is a six-month performance of the market, basically since September 1st. You see the S&P, of course, up uh, a nice chunk, uh, 11%. And yet, super cap marquee growth names, big long-term winners, all down. And down substantially. You're talking about spreads of 1,500 to 2,000 basis points on a six-month basis versus the market. Now let's look at chart of that exact same circumstance. So this is a comparative chart four lines. You see the market, of course, up and to the right, and you see those stocks all uh, quite correlated and flat, meaning they're treated as an asset class. Are they stocks that are suffering because rates prospectively are going higher? The very conversation, and what sort of multiple do you assign to future cash flow in the event of higher rates? Third chart. This is to show over the past year, year and a half, just how correlated they are. They are an asset. They're a uh, a thing unto themselves, and they're all being sort of unloved now. Uh, the question is, is this period of underperformance an opportunity, or is it just the beginning of worse? Uh, we think it's the former. Now, here is a basket. Uh, next chart. This is the three stocks, Amazon, Adobe, and Facebook. But you could put Home Depot in here. You could put Microsoft, in a way, in here, Costco great leaders that have all been uh, flat and boring as other things have come to life. Now, final chart, this is what my eye sees. I've annotated, I've drawn the lines, yes, which was to say we're working into the apex uh, tighter and tighter of, uh, you can call it a triangle, you can call it a wedge, it doesn't matter what you call it. This typically gets resolved. Now, a lot of people say, yeah, it's going to get resolved down as rates um, uh, go higher. I think it's uh, the opposite. I think these are going to break out, and in fact, what we do know, two things, is that the spread between small and large cap, Russell 2000, 1978 to present versus S&P, uh, has been only exceeded one other time in history, and it was in February and March of 2000. And what we also know, and we'll end with this, is that in a way the market can only go up if these big laggards come to life. So just to put that in context, these are the statistics going back to the beginning of GICS data in 1989. When tech is down, on any given trading day, any given week, the S&P is down 80% of the time. And when S&P 500 growth index is down, now we pick up things like Google and Amazon, the S&P 500 is down 93% of the time. It can only go higher over time if these marquee names participate. So it's a good sign for the markets, Carter, according to your analysis. Well, I, I think that's right, meaning in the sense that the first thing you do in a perfect world is to be short IWM and long SPY. But if you think the market is going higher in general, it's only going to happen because these stocks start to participate. Just remember those numbers again. Tech is down on any given trading day. The S&P is down 80% of the time. What happened this week? Financials up, industrials, materials, energy, all up. Was the market up? Of course it was not. Yep. Why? Because the big names were down. All right, Carter, see you, see you next half hour. Carter Braxton Worth of Cornerstone. You bet. Uh, Jeff Mills, which of these catch-up plays do you like? Uh, you know what? Uh, we're still in this, this relative value on the cyclical side. You know, I think the retail sales numbers that we saw this year are foreshadowing what's to come. You know, the weather warms up, the service economy starts to open up, and I think you have, you know, a couple of quarters ahead of us of some very strong stimulus-driven gr growth. So I have a hard time, at least with, with Facebook or, um, excuse me, with Amazon and Adobe, thinking of them as catch-up trades. And because Carter said it, I mean, they're, they're long-term winners. If you go back over the last five years, the S&P's up, you know, 120 percent to use round numbers. Amazon's up 530. Adobe's up 500 percent. So I just think that some of these names can still get left behind as the economy starts to ramp, as rates go up, as inflation goes up. It's a very similar argument that I made last week in terms of the underperformance of a stock like Google. That is a nice way of disagreeing with the chart master, Jeff. <laughs>
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.